Maya paabak kaya kayo man. Ako'y Maria Therese Zapanta Versosa. Margul ko pa salamat at atyo na ako na naman Kenny to impart career guidance for 11th graders. Bayo ko magumpisa, mumuna akong sabyan pang maragul ko, kapampangan ko at kulasa ko at katoliko ko. Three case. Kapampangan, akulasa, at katoliko. Mumuna kapampangan. Pagkalungkutan ko na ngini, akakita mo na kapampangan mother plus kapampangan father equals Tagalog child. Nanong milyari? Ing, ing kukutang ko po is, bakit nung kapampangan kayo, ladies, sana biyasa kayo naman magkapampangan. So, if, if our topic is career guidance, guess what? One day you you are going to stand in front or sit across a hiring manager or someone from around the world and they will ask you tell me about you. Well, nung ime pag maraguling ama nung siswan mo, if you don't speak your native language, then how do you even begin to be proud of who you are and where you came from? We have to be proud ladies of our heritage and the first manifestation of our pride in who we are is our language, is our native language. I was just speaking to someone na kapampangan niya ima na kapampangan niya i tatang na kaya ba't kakapampanganan kaya at suya kaya ni Amerika? Eh, ya biyasa palang kapampangan, Tagalog ya. Sabi ko, bakit ya kabiyasa? Ba't hindi ka maruno? Ang sagot niya e, Kasi po, sabi nila, para hindi daw po ako magka-accent. You know, that was a, an honest answer. But, I would like to advise you, ladies. There is no, there's nothing wrong with having an accent. It is beautiful, in fact, to have an accent. It means you know another language. It means that you have a native language other than English. I hope that that makes sense. So think about that. Now, when you send uh, turn in your resume or your curriculum vitae or CV, they call it, at, at least for me, when I wrote languages that are spoken, I wrote three languages there, English, Tagalog, Kapampangan, and I wrote they're proficient both in spoken and written. Now, compared to kung dalawa lang ang alam ninyo, English and Tagalog, now your dual versus uh um three languages or triple languages then don pa lang disadvantage ka na so mas maganda na tatlo ang languages mo kesa dalawa kung kapampangan ka so I, I am already parang it is a call to action like a motherly call to action so kung kapampangan ang pamilya mo nung kapampangan ta mo king yakatamong bale then, mag-practice tamong kapampangan. Kasi ito yung pagmaragul tamo one day, pagka atin tamong kasabi from, where if you are, if you find yourself one day in an international country and y- they want to know about you, because that's going to be the case. They will say, Therese, tell me about you. Where are you from? Well, the more that you know who you are, the more that you are proud of your roots, the more authentic person you are actually going to be kasi already from the start the first sign that you are proud of you or you're secure about you is you your language the words that you speak so i hope that that makes sense we haven't even start i haven't even started my talk but i thought that i will share you the preface of the very important thing the word that comes from our lips which is our Kapampangan language. Now, uh, for the talk, I prepared an acronym for Scholastican. Scholastican. So for every letter, there's a definition. And I'll do my best to finish it within 15 minutes, which is the time frame given to me. S, servant leader. So servant leader is not just for leaders. It is for everyone. We have to keep in mind that it is a mandate by the Lord to be servant leader 
within ourselves because he said in chapter uh, mark chapter 10 verse 45 for the son of man also came not to be served but to serve so if our savior is a servant leader then we are called to be servant leaders it means even though you are not a leader in a group you are on your own by itself a servant leader meaning you are humble enough to accept your mistakes you are a team player meaning you are assertive in times of help and you are always there in challenging moments you are there and you always think about others before you that servant leader and it it, it encompasses everything that you're going to be in this life because people would like to work with someone who is a servant leader than an a, a, a dicta dictatorial leader or an autocratic leader. C. Cararia. Cararia is a Latin word that means vehicle. But it is also f the word from where the word career comes from. Cararia. It means vehicle. So career is from the Latin word cararia no wonder car car vehicle so cararia career it means vehicle yun pala ang meaning so we are going to be our own vehicle and so where are we going that's the question never believe what they say when people say oh it doesn't matter where you're going what matters is the journey don't believe that ladies well yes i get it we want to enjoy the journey i get it but do you know that we are made for a higher purpose we are made for the ultimate destination that is what heaven what do i mean by that well we're catholics we're christians we know that one day our human body will die but we also know that one day we are not just a body that we have a soul and that soul will not die. The soul doesn't die. We die. My body, this one, one day I'll stop talking. I will die. But I know that there is a soul that will live forever. The question there is, where is my soul going to be? That is the ultimate question why we have to work on our careers. Because our career should be that vehicle that will lead us to heaven. If we just remember that, we are good. So don't believe when they say, oh, it doesn't matter where the journey will take you. Oh, where the, yes. Oh, it doesn't matter where the destination will take you. The journey is the one that matters. No, don't believe that. Destination is the most important thing. I don't think for once you would like to be in a car and you're going nowhere, right? Right. Makes sense. It will be foolish for us to be inside a car and we're not going anywhere. Or you will be upset. How much more for us? I mean, saan ka ba talaga? Right? And so that, but it, it's also a lifelong journey, really. Even when now at my age, I'm 49, I just turned 49, it is a lifelong journey for me, meaning I am not there yet. But at least I know my purpose. So it is important to have that discernment so that your career is your purpose. Okay, because there will be times that people will say, do this, be this, take this course. And then you realize, but it doesn't seem like it's your purpose. Because purpose makes your life meaningful. Meaning, 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 meaning. Someone can work, someone can finish a course and a career, a, uh, a well-paid career, pero wala siyang meaning. It, it only becomes meaningful when you see that it is serving others who are lower than you. In fact, who are the poorer than you. Poorer, meaning mas nakakababa. Then that becomes a career with meaning. Okay? So C for Kararia, and I would like to believe that it is a career with meaning. And it is a career that is centered towards Christ that will lead you to Christ in heaven. Okay, so S for servant leader, C, Cararia, which is, where is my career taking me? Cararia, it's a vehicle. Kaya pala, the driver of the vehicle is not you. 
It is Jesus. So you say, Lord, take the wheel. Steer the wheel for me. I give it all to you. Ako lang pala ay passenger. It's beautiful, isn't it? H, homemaker. What do I mean by that? I'm not saying wag na kayong mag-aral. Just be a homemaker. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, one day when you're done with your course or your profession and now you're working, mayroon yung intersection in your life that you will eventually marry. Or you will see that you are in a romantic relationship that's part of our lives. Be ready to embrace that calling that you are also called to be a homemaker. Did you know, I'm sure that someone read my resume, my little bio before I spoke, that the most important part that I can ever say to anyone, not just in front of the Lord, but to any everyone, is that I am a homemaker, that I raise my children because the building blocks of a society comes from the family. And who teaches the children? It is the mother because it is the mother's womb that first carried them. So, well, hindi lang nila lang ang homemaker. Hindi lang nila lang ang housewife. Hindi tama yon. One day when you say that, oh, housewife ka, don't say lang. You can say, I am proud to be a housewife. I am proud to be a homemaker. So, I am making sure na hindi ko sinasabi na huwag na kayo mag-college. I'm just saying that one day mag-i-intersect mag ang, ang career plus maybe the possibility of marriage and family. Be okay in embracing that. Okay? So, age four, homemaker. Oh, outside pressure and being open-minded. Outside pressure. My brother, I asked my brother kanina, uh, I said, Kuya, can you impart tips for 11th graders for career guidance? I asked him because he didn't finish his dentistry. And I asked him why. He said first, he was pressured by our parents. Well, I would like to say at that time, back in the 80s, 90s, early 90s, my father, my late father, Dr. Jose Sapanta, he was a dentist, God bless his soul, is that they asked Ferdy, my brother, would you like to be a dentist like me? So that when I die, sasaluin mo ni mga pasyente at saka dental office, dental clinic. And of course, again, just like you, we don't really know what you want to be. So, nag, na, he took up the dentistry, pero hindi niya natapos. So, I would like, kasi hindi, para, hindi niya ramdaban na it was for him. But he, ilang years yon. Uh, he saw na hindi para sa kanya pero nahihiya siya na sabihin sa parents namin na hindi para sa kanya yon. Nakikita na namin yung failures, nakikita na namin na nahihirapan siya, pero there was not a time where there was a, wait a minute, let's talk, let's regroup. Is it really for you, Ferdinand? So there will be a situation in your life as you move as you choose a career uh, cho choose a course na first you have to be persistent then meaning when you take up a course and at the first sight of challenge nagigive up na tayo hindi pwedeng ganun hindi pwedeng nahirapan ka lang o uh, sumabit ka lang ng grade sa grade ng konte eh magba back out ka na at sabi mo sa parents mo mami ayoko na ang hirap nito napaya ko sa mga klase ko sa professor ko hindi po pwede yon you know i know generation x I, I would like to make sure that grit grit is very important mental grit is the capacity to be resilient to be stalwart to be able to withstand the challenges around you. Para kang um, maple tree na kaya mo lahat ng, ng uh, forces of wind. Kung ano mang klaseng weather kakayanin mo. Pero at the same time, 
let us also be open-minded na share mo sa parents mo ang mga weaknesses mo, ang mga nangyayari sa college, para hindi rin, kayo, hindi rin sila nabibigla. Kasi hindi maganda yung antagal, nahirapan ka na pala, tapos aaminin mo lang later. It has to be that your parents are also inside the vehicle. Hindi pwede ikaw lang at ang Panginoon. Ang Panginoon would not want that. Dapat kasama sila. Kasi una, sila nagbabayad ng college mo. So dapat you are always walking along with them and saying, Mommy, Daddy, itong nangyayari. Mommy, Daddy, uh, let me see how about this. Uh, titingnan ko kung uh, kaya ng, ng, ng academic competence ko. Malalaman naman nila yon. At the same time, Um, again, be persistent. Wag lang yung at the, sign, at the first uh, challenge na napahiya ka, you'll give up. It cannot be. It cannot be. It's okay, guys. It's okay na magkamali. It's okay to fail. This is part of it. This is really part of it. Now, again, what is that? Oh, outside pressure and being open-minded. Okay? So, kung napapressure kayo because your parents advised you na, o oh, mag-doktor ka kasi doktor ako, uh, talk it out with your parents. Huwag mo ikukuble yung, na, yung pakiramdam mo na mm, naiya kasi ako eh. Sabi kasi ng papa ko, mag-doktor ako, pero para sa akin, hindi pala. So, talk it out. Be open. You know, it is important, really, to be open with your parents because this is your career. This, this, we're talking about your life and the future of your children. Okay? O is outside pressure, how to deal with that, and then being open-minded. Okay? Be persistent and be able to, pagka alam mong parang nahihirapan ka na, ang tagal mo na sa course mo, tapos you ask your parents about it, but, and then when they see na nahihirapan ka pala doon, be able to accept defeat. Hindi pwede yung nahihiya ka eh, si kuya, yung kapatid ko, nahihiya siya to the point na hindi rin niya natapos. Six years, hindi niya natapos. I mean, nasayang. You know, nasayang. So, uh, you will be able to feel. God, the Lord God will show you na sandali, this is not for you or wait, this is for you. Just hang on. So this that's why you need the Holy Spirit kasi by by yours alone hindi mo kakayanin. Letter L. Life skills. What are those? Can you relate with difficult people? Are you going to ask your parents to speak up for you when you cannot handle difficult people in college or when you work? Life skills or emotional intelligence or empathy, interpersonal skills, all of that. You know, my husband who is a doctor hires doctors, meaning he is the one that will hire a doctor. My husband will not ask, pati nga ng resume mo. I mean, he already checked that. By the time that that person who wants to be hired is in front of him, they already checked his resume, right? Kasi ganun naman yun, job interview. And usually, my husband Jude will ask, the questions will be around like, Is this guy going to be relatable to the community, to the doctors that he's going to work with? Is this guy able to cope with the challenges? How will he cope? So those are the questions. How will you cope with difficult people? When you are being challenged at work, what would you do? Would you reach out to them or would you lash out at people? So those are the questions that people will hire you, will ask of you. They will not say, oh, but yung grade mo dito, hindi 99, bakit 97 lang? They won't ask that. They won't. I guarantee you. Because people would like to hire people who are able to be humble enough to accept their mistakes. I would like to share with you a story. My, It's 19 minutes already. I'm going to talk fast. My son, Zach, has autism. Last year... He was interviewed, his first job, and it is in a restaurant. He said, and the boss said, so Zach, tell me about yourself. He said, my name is Zach Versosa. I am 17. I have autism that makes things a little bit difficult for me to understand, but I am willing to learn. 
and be taught. Do you know what? Just like that, the manager, the owner of this, the, the restaurant chain hired Zach. What is in that response that warranted the boss to hire my son? Because even though he has autism, even though he has disability, he said, but I'm willing to learn. When you say that, it means you are open to being taught. That's wonderful. Okay. A, abilities. What are you good at? And ask others, where am I good at? It's, this is called the self-assessment, self-audit. Where am I good at? And what do people say I'm good at? And also, alongside this, check in the community. Ano ba ang kailangan ng community? And then try to merge the two. Where you're good at, at what, what is in your community, in the country, that is in need of. And I'm sure you're also looking at what is America or other places in need of. And so these are important questions to, to ask. S, scriptures and sacraments. The reason why your parents are uh, have enrolled you in Saint School is because of that. So that you will live for the rest of your life as Catholics. So that whatever you do, even though you're now on your way to college after you graduate on the 12th year in high school, you will maintain your being Catholic by reading scriptures, we Catholics are not known to have Bibles, but that's kind of embarrassing because we need to love Bibles. We, you, we need to dust off our Bibles. We need to be able to practice at least reading a passage on scriptures. Of course, that, that's the summit of our Catholic faith, the Holy Eucharist. But yung yung sayo, yung personal mo with your with the lord you, you you invite yourself to learn about the scriptures and then so that when you one day you make a boyfriend ka you do it together don't say it's corny or kakaya naman corny nagbabasa ng bible no no remember you are not 11th grader forever you're going to be 12th grader you'll be in college and you're not going to be in college forever you want to graduate you want to work and again, you will not just be 25 years old forever. One day you'll be 30. One day you'll be 35. One day you'll be like me. Kung hindi mo inumpisahan ngayon, mahihirapan ka later on. Uh, one of the best gifts that I have received from the Lord is that the Lord brought me here in America. And because of that, mas napalapit ako sa pagiging, sa Panginoon. Mas, I became a more devout Catholic. Baliktada, no? Kasi sa America, you would think, hmm, you know, makakalimutan mo na ang faith mo. Sa akin, hindi. Why? Kasi sa Pilipinas, lahat tayo Catholic, almost lahat Catholics. In fact, Philippines is known to be the gateway of Christianity in Asia. Pero nung nandito ako, marami akong kilalang hindi Catholics. And they asked me, Therese, what is that white piece of bread that you honor and that you call the body of Christ? But to me, it's just a piece of bread. Why are you reciting the rosary where in fact the rosary is not in the Bible? Why are you, um, why, why do you make Mary as God when in fact Mary is not God? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, adoring Mary. No, Mary is the mother of God. I honor her because she's the mother of God. You know, she's the first apostle of the Lord because she said, let it be done unto me according to your word. I mean, those types of questions were raised and I didn't know how to answer. And so I learned to seek for answers, you know, the answers to my faith. Why do I do that? Why do I do the things that I do? I need to have those answers because that's me. That's my Catholic identity. That's my Catholic DNA. And now if I go back to my Catholic Benedictine Foundation, I need to, parang libro yon na nakalimutan mo na, na nakalagay sa baul, kukunin mo ulit, and then you realize, this is me. 
this is me, a kulasa, a benedictine, I need to be proud of it. Kaya nga sabi ko, proud to be kampampangan, proud to be kulasa, and proud to be Catholic. Sama-sama na yan. If you are th- in three, kapampangan, kulasa, uh, kap- kapampangan, kulasa, at katoliko, you're good for the rest of your life. If you keep that reverence for all of those th- all of those three, you're good. T, time. Where are you 15 or 20 years down the road? If you Do you still see yourself perhaps experiencing this course? Are you going to be okay with that? You know, of course, these are hypothetical questions because you are not there yet. But at least envision yourself and say, hmm, that looks possible. Or maybe, uy, parang hindi yata. Yung ganun. Because ako, ako, alam ko kaagad na ayoko mag-medicine. Kasi una, alam ko matagal. Pangalawa, alam ko gusto ko maging nanay. At ayoko na mag-aaral ako pagkatapos titigilan ko lang yung natutunan ko kasi magbe-baby ako. Parang naghihinayang ako doon. That's me, okay? That's me. This is the reason why we're all discerning individually. And also with the family. Where am I? I, immersion, internship. So you shadow a professional. We ask the community, pwede po ba ako mag-training? So I think that's self-explanatory. C, COVID challenges. So how will, how has COVID affected our lives? And I am certain it is something to ask ourselves. Uh, if, you know, COVID is going to be one day like a regular flu, but it's still going to affect our lives. So you have to consider that the challenges that will entail around the your chosen career, your chosen course. Kaya mo ba na maging nurse in this time of COVID? Would you like to see yourself as a doctor treating patients with COVID? Of course, pag natapos ka na, siguro God willing, yung pandemic tapos na. But I'm saying is, Kahit pa paano may remnants yan. Parang leprosy yan matagal. So, so you have to also anticipate that at one time, you know, yung, ang, 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 ang course mo, ang path mo is still affected by COVID even though hindi na siya ganun ka-contagious. And then, A, attitude of humility. This is when after trying your best, being persistent with your course, you realize it was a mistake, this course wasn't for you, what would you do? Ma- mahihiya ka ba? May insecure ka ba? Because, you know what? Alam ko, marami sa atin who fell into depression. You know? And and that's a psychological and mental condition that we have to really pay attention to. Hindi siya pwedeng nilalang lang yan. It is something that we really have to um, make sure that we help. You know, we we seek for help. And uh, kaso, at the same time, ask yourself, pag ba nakakahandala, pag ba I fail when I am not able to finish what I, th- I told everyone uh, na gusto ko, how do I handle that? Um, how do I handle stress? How do I handle defeats and failures? Will I be that insecure at maiinggit ako sa mga taong hindi, na non-stop yung kanila ako, nagtigil ako? You know, ladies, it's okay. How you handle yourself is what matters. Okay? So be be gracious in defeat and humility kasi that's how you learn. You will never learn kung you don't make mistakes. Kaya nga pagka you make a mistake, parang sa biyahe yan, Naligaw ka, tapos mali ang dinaanan mo, and then you turn ka. You think dadaanan mo ulit yung mali na, na, na road? Hindi, di ba? Alam mo na. Alam mo na iwasan. So, mistakes are actually very good when you look at it in the perspective of learning. And remember, to the, until the last day you die, you will always learn. Learning is forever. Learning is forever. It's, it doesn't end at, on your graduation day. You will be a lifelong learner. And N, that's my last letter. Sorry, guys, it's 29 minutes, but I will, I'm almost done. N, Nersha to Monte Cassino to Sobiaco. Sounds familiar? Nersha to Monte Cassino to Sobiaco. 
the three places in Italy where our Saint Benedict lived from the time of his birth to the time of his ministry until the time of his death. This is encompassing what I talked about, that there will be nurses in our lifetime moving on to Mount, Mount Subiaco, uh, I mean, to Monte Cassino, to, to Subiaco. Do you see what I mean? Meaning, it's a process. Marami kang dadaanan pala. Hindi lang siya letter A, tapos kagad letter Z. The alphabets, and dami. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, all the way to Z. So, there are times na hindi ka pala kagad A to Z. Marami. Marami ka pang alphabets na dadaanan. Sometimes, mabilis. Sometimes, marami. And that's okay. So, inertia to Monte Cassino to Subiaco by St. Benedict before everyone knew that he was St. Benedict. So, be open to the will of the Lord. But how do you know that it is the will of the Lord? You tell Him, Lord, I know you're here. I know because I've been studying about you in, in my high school life. You have to take the wheel and I will be your passenger. But in order for me to know where you want me to go, show me, show me. And you know what? The Lord will show you. The Lord will show you through people, through experiences, through stories. So you have to invite the Lord. You cannot do this by yourself. You invite the Lord and the Lord will, uh, will show you, I guarantee you, because I speak from experience. But then again, I'll go back to my preface at the start of this. Pagmaragulme in pagkakapampangan mo, pagkakulasa mo, at pagkakatoliko mo. And you will go a long, long way. Ang kararia mo is centered to Christ, towards Christ. Thank you very much.